Hello friends. Today I am back with a new topic that is calculus for gradient descent. In the last video we discussed about the model creation, how you are predicting things. And when you used to predict the things, you used to have some measures for accuracy. That is how you evaluated the model. During the time, I discussed some topics like error term. So, whenever you are predicting something, you are getting some model in the term of a mathematical function. In that particular function, when you are finding the accuracy, you see what is your point, that is your predicted point and your target point. There is a difference between the two, that is your error term. Now, you have to minimize this error. Whenever you talk about minimizing a function, you should know what is the importance of derivatives here, why derivatives are found, how to find a minima of a point, whether the minima is a local minima or it is a minima of the full function. So today we will discuss little bit about calculus and then consider the gradient descent and also the algo of gradient descent and also we will have the implementation in Python. Firstly, let's start with limits. Let's have a function that is y square minus 1 divided by y minus 1. Now, if we see these, this value and substitute y is equal to 1, what do you get? We get 1 square minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1, that is 0 divided by 0. And I think you all know that 0 divided by 0 is indeterminate. I cannot determine that value. Hence, we have to find something like what may be the value when we are approaching towards 1. Maybe 1.00001 or maybe like 0 0.99999. Both the values are approaching towards 1 but none of them are 1. This particular thing is done with the help of limits. So we will find the value of this particular function while my value of y or x whatever the function says tends to 1. Now let us in an excel sheet or by pen and paper find the values. Substitute y is equal to 1. What do you get? We get 0 by 0. We cannot calculate it. Substitute 0 0.5 we get 1.5. Then substitute 0 0.9. Calculate. Increase the value to 0 0.99. Again in the next iteration increase it 0 0.999. Keep on increasing it and find the value. If you, if you want to do it scientifically or directly by the calculator you can use the excel sheet or I would suggest at least for once try with pen and paper so that you get easy, it becomes easy for you. What we see with the increase in the value or we can say when our value is tending towards 1 from less than 1 that is 0 0.9, 0 0.999, 0 0.9999 and so on, my value of this particular function tends towards 2. You can see in my black box the figures are like 1.9, 1.99, 1.999 and so on. This says the limit of y square minus 1 divided by y minus 1 as x approaches to 1 is 2. I think the concept of limit is clear. Now in this example we are approaching towards 1 but there may be some values like 1.01, 1.0001, 1.00001. These are also towards 1. These are very much towards 1 or you can say approximately equal to 1. Again, we need to find the values where we are having such cases. See, now again I have made a black box where we I have substituted all the value. I have calculated the value and shown you. Like when it is 1, again it is 0 by 0. But when it is 1.5, it is 2.5. The value of y is 1.1, 2.1, 1.01, 2.01, 1.001, it comes out to be 2.001 and so on. You can keep on taking different values and find what is the value of the function. One more thing I may suggest to you is that 
take this particular function plot a graph and see how the values are approaching towards 1 and how the value of the function gets changed. Again in this case I can see my value of the function tends to 2. So whether it is a right hand side or from the left hand side in both the cases the answer to this question becomes 2 that is limit of x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 when x, x approaches 2 x approaches 1 is 2. This is the whole concept of limits. This is just an intro to the limits so you can get a vague idea which would be help, helping in differentiation and then the gradient descent. You can pause the video and just go through it once again so that you, you know what is the limit. You can also have some other functions for example you can take the functions like x cube plus 1, x cube plus 4 divided by x cube minus 2 and so on. Anything which gives like 0 by 0 uh, normal output and then you can try the limit in it. Let us move to the next side. Now comes the comes concept of derivatives. Now in the initial uh, some of the videos I have shown you what is the change in slope? What is differentiation? See whenever you are putting some line that is it may have some x coordinate and it is having some y coordinate. The change in the value of the y coordinate divided by the change in the value of x coordinate gives you the slope. Let us have a normal function fx is equal to x square. Firstly just see this white diagram in which I have shown how my x is changing. With little change in delta y my x changes from f, fx changes to fx plus delta x because my x has changed from x to delta x. Delta x means a very very small change in x. Now slope of the formula is f of x plus delta x min is minus f of x into delta x. Now we know f of x we have considered as x square. We directly put it in the formula. You all know a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. We just substitute it and then find that when delta x heads towards 0 we get the answer to be 2x. This means the derivative of x square is 2x. This is the full derivation but in normal practice we do not need the derivation. There are certain you can say either it can, you can ask, say it as a formula or you can derive it every time. In case of x square it is 2x, in case of x cube it is 3x square and so on. You can directly derive it or you can have a list of formula. I will just give you some links where you can get all the derivatives formula. For example, there are trigonometric functions like sin x, cos x, sin plus cos x, tan x, logarithmic functions and many things. Now let us move on. See, I just said you the example of x square. I have plotted the graph x square. I think you all agree with the graph of x square. It will have at a value of x is equal to 0, it will have a value of 0. It will have the value of 4 at x is equal to 2 as well as x is equal to minus 2. Therefore, it will be a little bit of u-shaped graph. Now, I have shown in the uh, table the values of x and the values of x square starting from minus 10 to positive 10. When it is minus 10, the value is 100. Again, when it is 10, the value is 100. Similarly, minus 9, the value is 81 and for 9, again, the value is 81. And for minus 1, the value is 1. And for 1, the, again, the value is 1. I have plotted the graph. Now you can see two black lines which actually shows the angle. In this particular graph, I just want to show with a little bit change in the x square, what would be the change in the y? That is, at that particular point, what would be the derivative? If I say the derivative of x square is 2x, that means x square if you plot say at x is equal to 3 therefore the derivative of this particular graph at x is equal to 3 what would be the derivatives my answer comes to be 2x and x is equal to 3 I plot it becomes 6 2 into 3 6 this is the way how we find the derivative of slope or slope of that particular line I think I am clear with the graphical example if not please ask me questions in the comment section I am always ready to help you next let let us have any type of function in today's example i'm ask i'm taking the function as y is equal to x plus 5 whole square i want to find the minima of that particular function 
the minima of the function means the minimum point like what would be the minimum value of that particular function I have plotted the graph of x plus 5 square I think uh, this is pretty much clear where x will be equal to minus 5 it will be equal to 0 I have plotted the same thing I have taken the different values of x and the different values of y and it is pretty much clear like for 0 it becomes 25 because if you put x is equal to 0 y is equal to 5 square which comes out to be 25. Now just by looking at this graph we can see the minimum value comes out when my value of x is minus 5 and what would be that minimum value that would be 0. Okay. Now if you want to find out we can directly go by the derivatives. Just try to find out what is the derivative of x plus 5 whole square and then equate it to 0. You can easily find the minima. This particular process that we are doing manually to find out the minima is actually the gradient descent algorithm. Gradient descent algorithm in machine learning iterates the particular function each and every time and it tries out to find the minima. Now in this particular diagram when you for example if you have a little small ball and you are at the top of the graph you need to descend down to the value where you find the minima. How will you do? You will start running or you will start throwing the ball. For example you yourself start running around the slope that is the hill. When you start running you will have certain steps. How much step you should take? It can be large step, it can be small step. For example if you are taking very large step you may miss the minima and jump out to the next step which is not the minima. Or it may happen if you are taking a very less step you are so slow that you take a lot of time to reach the minima. That particular step is called the learning rate or in technical terms it is said as alpha value. Let's see the gradient descent algorithm and how it works with the machine learning and how we also implement in Python. See, there are certain standard steps for the gradient descent algorithm. Firstly, you have to initialize a particular number. For example, in this we are initializing with a value of 2. Then find the gradient descent gradient of the function dy by dx. dy by dx of this function, x plus 5 whole square, it is 2 into x plus 5. 2 into x plus 5. I have written in the second pink box. Next, move in the direction of the negative descent. That is, we have to find the minima. You have to start descent or de towards the decreasing slope. Now, then you have to decide what would be your learning rate. For example, we are considering my learning rate to be 0 0.01. And each and every time you start performing the iterations until and unless you get the minima value. Okay. Now let's do the iterations manually or, or with the help of calculator. Okay. Uh, there are also two graphs like uh, one graph is that you, when you are initializing with the random value and the learn, random value and the learning rate you keep on jumping and jumping until you find the minima value. So your learning rate may also change with every iteration. See initially in the diagram in the left hand side, initially the learning rate was high therefore there was bigger steps and as we move towards the minima my step size decreases. That, my, that means my learning rate decreases. I have decreased this dynamically. Okay? Now let's see how the iterations are done. Firstly, let's initialize the parameters. That is, I have initialized the first number x0 as 2, my learning rate is 0 0.01 and I am finding the dy by dx, that is the differentiation of the function, that is d of x plus 5 square, that is 2x plus 5. This is my first initial, just the power of initialization. Second is the iteration. In the first iteration, what my x1 becomes? It, it becomes x0 minus the learning rate into dy by dx. So my x0 is 2 that I have initialized minus 0 0.01 into dy by dx that was 2 into x plus 5. Okay. Now calculate the value of x1. The x1 comes out to be 1.86. Now this becomes my initial parameter for the second iteration. Now I have to calculate x2. 
x2 will be x1 minus learning rate into dy by dx. Similarly, I am having the x1 from iteration 1 that is 1.86 and then I am again subtracting it from 0 0.01 into 2 into 1.86 plus 5. See the value of x becomes 1.86 which comes from the iteration 1. Now my x2 decreases to 1.7228. Similarly, I do the iteration again iteration 3 and in this case now my x3 comes out to be 1.5884. You keep on iterating and there will be a particular value among these all the x's where you get the minimum value. There, that is the point where your decent gradient descent algorithm will stop. And you can say at this particular point, my function will have the minima value. And your function is already the cost function or the loss function of the model, which says at this particular point, your error function will be minimum and hence your model will be most accurate. Now let's see how we are solving it in Python. I have declared a variable cur underscore x, that is the algorithm start at x2. In this example, the x0 is 2 and the same thing my initialization parameter is 2, learning rate I have decided as 0 0.01, precision I have decided as 0 0.001, this tells when the algorithm should stop, my step size is equal to 1, okay, and I have also decided the iterations, okay, that is 10,000, maximum number of iterations, because more the number of iterations, the machine will keep on iterating, and this will not only increase the complexity, but as well as the time, but both are very important factors in our code. Then comes the iteration counter. This is a normal counter. I have initialized it as 0. And what is my df? It is the lambda function of x where it, that is equal to 2 into x plus 5. That is my derivatives. Now, what I have done, while the pre-step size, which I have already discussed as 1, is greater than precision and my iteration iters, that is my counter is less than max iters, that is the number of maximum iteration that I have already set that is a value of 10,000, the loop will continue. In this particular loop, I will keep on see, previous x would be equal to correct, that is same thing like in this where x1 is equal to x0 minus learning rate and this loop will continuously go on as this is an iteration, iteration 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. I have already mentioned what is the maximum number of iterations and in this case, now what will the minimum value? My program or the my function will print. Uh, at the final value I have printed the local minima occurs at particular value that will come from my while loop which is which will having where the variable will be stored in corrects. See this is the type of iteration you will get each time it will be printed and finally after many iterations I have just given a sample of iteration from 435 to 448 and 576 to 588 and finally the local minima comes out to be minus 4.99995. Okay, maybe if we increase the iteration, the value will be more towards 5. As we already know, my iteration, uh, my minima value is at 5 as the value was, as my function was x minus 5 whole square. Obviously, at 5 minus 5, 0, 0 was it, was, it was having the minimum value. This is all about the gradient descent algorithm. The final thing or the conclusion of the gradient descent algorithm is that Every time you have to find the minima of that particular function where the function is your cost function or the loss function that you have already created after creating your model. Okay. I have already given the code in the GitHub link. I have uploaded it. You can directly see the links. Any type of queries, any type of questions, you can please comment it. Any type of appreciation also comment it or any type of feedback. You are always most welcome. Any questions, I am always ready to help. Keep liking the video. Keep subscribing. Do watch. Thanks a lot. Thank you.